I'm all hey right. Guys. So I am Ashlyn. I'm the betrayed. That's my husband. I'm Kobe. I'm the addicted. And I'm Brandon. I'm the expert. And um, this is an opportunity for us to show you live our recording of our podcast. And um, so we're going to hit record and we're going to go. We won't be able to answer your questions here live, but uh, we will answer we'll. them after. And that's yep. something that you can look forward to in the future is is getting to be able to do a QA. and a um, We'll probably have like an episode specifically for that to, to take questions on Facebook or on right. Instagram. And that get, will become... So if you uh, do have itself. questions that come up that don't even pertain to this, make sure um, for Instagram, will you please direct message us? And um, for Facebook, leave them in the comments and we'll um, get prepared for next time. Yeah, totally. So, all right, we're going to hit record and talk to you about creating connection. What's up, everybody? This is the betrayed, the addicted, and, and the expert. My name is Brandon, and I am the expert. And I'm Kobe. I am the, uh, the addicted. And I am Ashlyn, and I was betrayed. All right, so today's topic, you know, we decided we've been talking a lot about addiction and recovery and, you know, broken trust and betrayal. And we want to heavy stuff. We want right? to talk about the good stuff today. And really the ultimate goal of all of this, which is creating some connection and having that connection and that intimacy and that, that happiness together. And so we wanted to hit on a topic that, um, that hopefully brings some hope, but also is something that's good. You know, it might trigger some other things too, like some, some sadness that you don't have it or some real yearning to get it. But we hope that we can give you specific steps um, to help you create connection in your life and, and also understand how the addiction does get in the way of that. And so that's one of the first things I want to touch on is how, you know, an addiction is an attachment disorder. And so... And that, that's kind of heavy. I mean, even for me, like, I've done enough work to kind of get that but how what's that look like yeah I mean I could I could go into detail as to why it's an attachment disorder you know I've, I've heard it said that addiction is somebody's attempt to to find God they want they want attachment they want to feel connected and you know we all have a desire for connection and um, when somebody doesn't have healthy or secure attachment they turn to something else to get that attachment and then that something else be it drugs or pornography or masturbation, um, it creates shame, which then undermines actual healthy, secure attachment in a relationship. Mm. And so once you, once you get to a place where that attachment is being healed and somebody has secure attachment in their life, they don't need the addiction anymore. And, and so, you know, couples come in, I don't know if you guys went through this, but couples will come into my office and the first thing they do is sit down and say, hey, fix this relationship. Like we're, you know, there's problems here. It's we want to be connected, and we can't communicate, and we can't really get vulnerable with each other. And what one of the first things that needs to happen is we need to take the wedge out of the addiction, so the couple can get close. And well, that was us. Was it? That was us. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, we've talked about it on this before. How we for years went to therapy saying we just well you went yeah. saying I just need connection and I'm not getting it. And, and it was so ever... confusing of like, well, what does that mean? And it, it was like it was something was new every time. It's like, I don't know. Because you didn't know. Yeah, right. I, I didn't know, but I ached for it. Yeah. And, and what's funny about that, too, is that the one thing that I ached for, Ashlyn um, consciously, like, you're like, I don't know what that is. Like, give me, you like, define it. And I was like, I yeah. don't know. But subconsciously, you were like, boom, walls up. Because it's like, Kobe, you are not safe at all. Right. It was like your protective mechanism to keep you safe because I wasn't. Well, you know, connection, it's kind of turned into this buzzword. It's, you know, you hear Brené Brown talk about it all the time. Yeah. And I want connection. I need connection. But but what is it? What is connection? What are we trying to create here? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? What is it? I, I mean, <laughs> I'll say for me, so so connection for me um, it has a little bit of context in the sense that um, my my primary love language is, is uh, physical touch. My secondary is uh, words of affirmation. So... I, I um, long more for those things than I do say gifts. Yeah, gifts right. or Ashlyn, you know, doing my laundry, which I always appreciate, but it, it just doesn't translate the same way. So for me, what connection is for me, and we've only recently defined this, is like every day I need to feel like Ashlyn, like a, a, um, a soothing, reassuring touch of love for me. So it's like we've kind of outlined 
like then in the morning once we send the kids off it's like we're just gonna spend a few minutes and just like be together like lay on the bed and just kind of hold each other to um to create that right and that kind of reassures me and it helps me be connected and, it, and it's non-sexual uh-huh. and that's kind of hard to to swallow as uh-huh. like a sex right. addict right well and that, i think that's, what, that's, that maybe what it helped us define that for our relationship was when we did the six hour mindfulness retreat mm-hmm. where we were with each other and next to each other for six hours straight but mm-hmm. we couldn't have eye contact and we couldn't talk right and so it was very clear like that is a disconnect you know like there's no there's no way we were communicating to each other and we were just kind of existing next to no each other. eye contact no communication yeah no you're not connected right so although that we were having this really cool experience it it was definitely different and not together right and the minute that we could see each other and talk it was like instant yes like, we want to talk about what we just went through yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but also tell them what what you did while we were oh i lunch oh yes so we were told no eye contact no um, conversation conversation but he didn't say no physical touch so I did grab Kobe's hand because I was longing for that connection right like we're going through this really cool thing together and I can't feel you right yeah. yes but yes. that's that touch just it was like hand. exploding it because, was yeah it yeah. was like overflowing with with meaning I, I love this as you guys are talking about it because here I am standing in the middle of you guys <laughs> I, feel, I feel a little awkward like I didn't need... <laughs> Sorry, why are we studying like this? <laughs> I'm, I'm in the middle of your connection yeah. here. Um, <laughs> you're just part of it now. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I love it because what you're describing is, is genuine, authentic connection. And, and you know, the, the key ingredient to it is, is vulnerability. Is when, you're, when you're able to be vulnerable with each other, then you have those moments of, of intimacy and connection. And... And you love each other. That's what that's what it's all about, right? And so, you know, last week we talked about the foundation of creating that, which is rebuilding trust. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to have connection without trust and safety. That's that's just level one yeah. um, to create connection. And once that trust starts to get rebuilt, um, if you can if you can maintain honesty and openness in a relationship, that's really important, mm-hmm. right? Now, Kobe, you you were going to talk about how. You know, that was one of the first steps, first things that you could commit to, to create connection was just to be honest yeah. and just to be open. That was really scary for me. It was really scary. Because we'd never had it. We'd never had it. And I like was full not. Like truth. I no, guess. for sure. And I was not skilled in any way. I could tell you what honesty was, but I didn't live it because right. <laughs> I was lying to myself as much as I was lying to you or anybody else, Ash. But I knew, like, if there's one thing I can do. It's like, okay, I can be honest going forward. And the nice thing was, is once we had like full disclosure and everything was out on the table, all the cards were down, it was like, okay, now we're, now we're at zero. Right? right. Right. Here's our baseline. Right. So going forward, being honest is going to suck if something was to go sideways, but, 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 um, it required a lot of vulnerability, like you said. But you From, knew, you knew if, if there's any chance for connection and trust with her, openness and honesty mm-hmm. had to happen. Right. For sure. Right. And it was a little bit of testing the waters to see how safe it was for sure to you know because neither be of us vulnerable. we weren't safe but that meant neither were for each other and we talked about that last week that right. we weren't safe for each other but that also meant that we neither of us were willing to be vulnerable with the other as well how's that for like a wicked cocktail right right, right. both like... both of you are, are just kind of at a standoff yeah. right with the vulnerability you can see you're disconnecting there's mm-hmm. not connection there and so openness and honesty um, the next thing is and we've talked about this on the podcast as well but it's it's just holding space. It's learning how to just take a step back and let the other person feel. And before you jump in, before you even really empathize and but but you just take space and let them feel what they're feeling. Okay, so give me a scenario like on that like for Ashlyn, like put use this as it's, like your little puppets and just yeah. Tell yeah this is okay. What, this is what it okay. Like. So um, let's say that you come home and she's been working all day and she's stressed out and she's the house is a mess and the kids are going crazy and you walk in and you're like hey let's go let's go out and have a good time at the park or something and she's just like melting down okay okay how do you hold space in that moment you want to do what you want to do Mm -hmm. right you're you're kind of oblivious to what's actually going on right right which was our norm (laughs) it was right how can you hold space in that moment um 
I mean, that's that's like a, that's a super good question because um, I, I think I, I think looking back at me, the addicted me, I, I think I was so codependent that I allowed Ashlyn's emotions and mood uh -huh. to dictate my own. Then you're not going to hold space. No. So yeah. that meant that I was like, I, I saw that she wasn't balanced or, or whatever it was. So he probably and would have offered shame. up, let's go to the park. He would have just been mad or resented me or, or something. Right. Or just fearful of like, maybe she's going to blow up and blow up at me. Right. I don't want to like do anything wrong, but I still need to do anything to help or to empathize. So for me, I think just putting myself in that scenario. Um, so how would you do it now? I mean, how I would do it now is I would just say, okay, tell me about your day. Like what's... What's going on? Give her a chance to just blow. Get there, it out. there you go. That's it. Simple, right? <laughs> right. But uh, you have to turn the switch off from it's 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 not it's selflessness is what we're talking about. You stop for a minute and you say, "Hang on, I want to show up for her. I'm just going to take a step back and let her feel what she's feeling here." If your shame's there and your 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 shame screening and you're triggered and you're you know then you're going to jump right in and start to take care of you. And that might look like you trying to fix it for her because you're uncomfortable or you telling her that she shouldn't feel the way she feels or whatever that is, rather than just like, hey, I'm here. I can hold this for you. I'm available to just listen. Okay, so right I now. think you just said something that I think I, I still do, and that is try to fix it, right? And I think that, Ashlyn, you've been really good at, at um, identifying, no, 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 I'm, I'm not interested in you trying to fix this. I want you to just listen to me. Mm -hmm. right. Like, you've been really good at that. So what you're saying is... Actually, what's what's taking place currently is I'm, I'm so, so so just everyone who's out there. I'm still I'm still on my road of uh, my journey, still trying to make progress. But again, the idea is is number one is just give her an opportunity to, to share without having to fix, right? To fix yes, it, right? Or judge, w or, or without without fi trying to fix it for her uh -huh. or turning the tables on her, shutting down. Okay, you just show up for her and you. You hold space for her to okay. process. That's Makes that's what you're sense. doing. Yeah, when, when you try to fix it, it, it can look very selfless, but you're actually you're uncomfortable yourself because she's uncomfortable. So you're oh, trying to me. fix it, right? And but so that's really a selfish thing. And she and, and Ashton, you pick up on that when mm -hmm. he goes into fix it mode. Like, yeah, you're you're like, yeah, I just I just want you to show up for me. Just like let me process this. Let me talk through this. Don't fix it, right? right. So. That, 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 that's um, it's a super good reminder for me, honestly. <laughs> right, right. It's a super good reminder for me, and and I'm okay saying that because that's just one of the things I have to work on. But but I've always said this because I've learned this myself is part of recovery is being okay with being uncomfortable, and and the different places in life where that fits, they're just everywhere. This is a prime example of I've just got to be okay with being uncomfortable and holding Ashlyn in that place. You know, so my wife's mom died two months ago, and. Um, it's you know she's had an enormous amount of grief and that grief is uncomfortable and and I haven't been perfect at it by any means but my wife and I have really bonded we've had connection through that grief and it's because in a lot of ways I've been able to just hold space for her and just sit in that really difficult pain with her and that's what connection is right is and, and if I if I couldn't handle it I'd be bailing on her I, I I'd be taking care of me I'd, I'd try to fix it for her. I would not get over it. Get over it. Yeah. yeah, I'd just try to move move on. Um, but, you know, c connecting is not about just being happy with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's about experiencing all emotions together. And through that, that's what creates intimacy, that, that real connection. Mm -hmm. And so. That's super good. I love that. What, what's happened for you, Ash, in those moments when I actually have been okay with being uncomfortable and I've given you a place to sit in it? What's that like for you? Well, it's safe, number one, but it's exactly what Brandon was saying. It just allows me to process, and sometimes it's that making the um, a molehill out of what I've made a mountain, and seeing that I have someone that has my back and can help if needed, if I ask. <laughs> you know, when you have that, the feeling that, that I hear my clients say, and I've experienced myself, is it's just relief. It's, it's safety. Like I have somebody who loves me <clears throat> and I feel relief. I, I can process through this and they're holding it for me and I, I feel better because they're holding it for me. So that's great. Um, which leads us to the next one, which is empathy. And, um, you know, empathy is this, what we're talking about in a lot of ways. Um, you know, Brené Brown talks about the four things that need to happen for empathy to take place, um, which are first perspective taking, 
is to connect to somebody, you have to realize that your perspective is totally different than their perspective and allow them to have their perspective. If you're always telling them that, no, it's this way or no, it's that way, but they're saying, no, I see it this way. You're not even allowing them the first step to say, this is what I see, this is how I feel. Um, the, the second thing is to withhold judgment. Mm-hmm. Is if you if you're always judging, you know, each other is crazy or difficult or whatever, then when they're experiencing something, you're labeling them and judging them. You're not going to show up for them. You're not going to hold yeah, any space sense. for them. The next one is to dig deep. So you want to you want to get off. I, I I say, take your eye off the ball and look at the game. And mm-hmm. so if your eyes on the ball, you're like. But the game, so, so someone might be saying, gosh, I'm really, I'm really angry that the dishes aren't done. But deep down, maybe there's some real sadness, or fear, or loneliness going on. Like the dishes are a symptom of what's it's, underneath. They're just complaining about the dishes, but there's another emotion going on. And if you can stop for a second and dig deep with them, you know, like, what is it? And, and just ask inquisitive questions, reflect back um, what you're hearing, and just reflect to them kind of where what you're seeing and and ask them questions that aren't leading them anywhere that you want them to go Mm -hmm. then they'll start to hopefully open up and say this is this is really where I'm at this is what's really going on and the last one is to to communicate back an understanding of that emotion this is this is this is really hard really really difficult yeah yeah And, and it's it's not um it's not saying something every time it's and, and this is this is that vulnerable part and so um, gosh the best example I, I have of this is I, I had a neighbor who really quickly I'll tell the story I had a neighbor who who was diagnosed with cancer and he was he was given three weeks to live and I was over at his house and I hate telling this story I shouldn't tell this story and his daughters walked in I have a daughter his age and his daughter didn't know the diagnosis and he just started crying when she walked in and hugging her and I just sat there on the couch and cried with him. Um, I, I felt his pain, I felt his sadness. I didn't say, hey, I'm feeling this with you or I want to connect to that. I just sat there with him and, and he, I'm sure he felt my love and my empathy and my connection with him. So sometimes it's just a hug, sometimes it's a smile, sometimes it's just a touch, right, of, of a hand. So you don't have to always communicate it verbally so. so one of the so, so this is really good because I think you just give an illustration of, of the of the simplest way the, the 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 lowest common denominator for me to be able to wrap my head around empathy because it was like empathy was just this huge deep broad ocean that I couldn't see the beginning of the end of and I was like especially when I'm like trying to recover it's right like, this is this is Greek right to me. yes so, so so one of the best the, the best definitions that I heard was being able to, to um, put yourself in someone else's shoes to to see their life and feel their life from their perspective. Without yeah. having to actually have gone through what they're going no, through. No, no. Yeah. And I think right. you just described what that's like, although you were on his couch and next to him rather than in his shoes. You were, right. I mean, you get yeah. the idea. But I wasn't dying in three weeks. Right. But I have felt sadness before and I have felt like real love toward my daughter before. Mm-hmm. and. Like, you know, I'm feeling those things because I, I felt those things in my life. Totally. Right. So, that's what, so, so that's what I would say as, as far as the addicted. If you're, if you're listening and you're like, how do I even do this? It's like, put yourself in their shoes and see their life from their perspective. But can, can I back up yeah, real totally. quick? Uh, I put one step before that, do which that. is check your shame at the door. <laughs> like, to get mm. mindful in the moment and just say, okay, hey, it's not about me. It's not about my shame. That's really so good. now I'm going to put myself in their shoes. It's not about me. That 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 makes a lot of sense. Right. Like this is, this is not about me because I, I don't know what your thoughts on this are, but I think for years, for 14 and a half years, I probably made issues well, no, like this. Yeah, we have a me. recent story of that this exact situation where he did check his shame at the door, and empathy was shown, and all was well. Right, and 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 it doesn't it it goes this this thing that's difficult turns into this thing where where you connect with each other mm. whereas before it turned into this disconnection and this big fight mm-hmm. right so and really good. those moments are the ones that you chalk up and it's like sweet that's progress that's and that's recovery. although we may not be connected 24 7 
this is a moment we can absolutely add to our hello yeah. we're making creating progress. safety together in yeah. a relationship yeah. absolutely that's super good yeah. that's a win and and those are those are key those kinds of wins like that's way better than like checking a box saying I did this. It's like, right, but it's acknowledging them. That's yes, the hard thing. That's so absolutely, like, absolutely. This was a win, even better. if it was hard and scary. It was a win. And and that that win perpetuates more wins of the same kind. It's easier to do it again next time because you got more safety. Right, you can be more vulnerable with each other. Totally. Yeah, that's how it works. Sweet. So can I give just a couple more um, little tricks to the trade yeah. the connection? Um, one is to stay on one topic at a time. And so, you know, if you come into a situation and somebody's feeling an emotion and then all of a sudden you're like, well, you're feeling that because, because you did that to me, so I feel this way. So I, next thing you know, you're, you're off on another topic. I used to, well, yeah. sometimes I still have that attack. But I used like to be really good at that. Like, I was like, but this and this and woo woo woo. Yeah, that, that happened 10 years ago. When you, da, 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 and you I know. remember that. Right. And I'm yeah. just kind of just like taking like shotgun, like, <laughs> You know, buckshot like crazy going. I, I, I don't know. It what was not exactly. Helpful. I don't even know where right. to go. Right. <laughs> Which one do I chase? That was hard. But and, and and distracting or changing topics can be a defense mechanism. So it can happen really quickly, and drama can start to to really take place <laughs> when you start to go from one topic to the next. But if you you know, I'll have my couples stop and and they'll say, "Okay, it is my topic right now. It's just, all we're going to talk about." is how frustrated I am with the dishes. That's it. We're not going to talk about what happened last night or this or that or anything else, right? That's good. So one topic at a time. Okay. Um, the other thing is you don't have to agree and don't try to agree. It's not about agreement. And so it's not about one person saying, oh yeah, you're right about this or you're right about that. You guys can totally disagree and see it differently but still connect on an emotional level. And, and so what that has to do with is, is the other person has a different perspective. And it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. You're feeling something about something, and that's what's important. That's, that's so. like interdependence rather than codependence. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Codependency is, well, we have to agree together, and we, we're, we do everything together, even feel our feelings together. Yeah. Right? That was, no. that was totally me, where I would, like, concede, like, is that how you feel? Okay, cool. Like, easy win? I'll, I'll go right along with what you just said. And completely abandon any thoughts or identity that I had about any that, that specific topic. Right, absolutely. So That's that's a long time coming, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get there. Um, next one is, and this one might seem obvious, but it's really important, and that's just no no abuse, no spitting, hitting, calling names, and, and be willing to take a time out or a break if you need to. Like stop, you know, regulate your emotions and come back to it and it's okay to take a break as long as you come back to it okay so so yeah that's, don't that's pretty good yeah that's obvious right well in truth though when when um, emotions are just heightened and and I'm drowning in my shame it's really easy for me to be super manipulative and, and even emotionally abusive in, in, in ways with Ashlyn. Right. When, when I'm just like drowning and I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm in such a bad way. Right. Well, and, but you know what? There might be times when you really aren't being manipulative or emotionally abusive, but she's feeling that way. And, mm. she's, and, and, and she might be saying, that, hey, that, I, that doesn't work for me what you're doing. And you're saying, what? I'm not doing anything wrong. But if she's feeling that way, then safety's That's broken down, connection's not going to yeah. happen. So take a break and come back when you can both be vulnerable and and communicate and connect with each other. That's awesome. So That's good. Yeah. So um, day to day, and then maybe maybe bi-weekly, we wanted to share also, and want, want your feedback on this, this the things that, that we've done and that we've kind of like instituted. Actually, we did this with our girls before we actually did this with ourselves. Um, day to day so that we can create some connection but just as human beings rather than in, in the roles of the betrayed and the addicted just as, as two people two human beings right so um, doing um, a uh, an emotional check-in with the feeling wheel why don't you speak to that and how we did it with the girls before we did that and we, I guess we still do with the yeah girls. we still do mostly when the girls get off the bus or not the bus we don't ride the bus anymore but when they come home from school and they're feeling frustrated or mad upset um, we head to the feeling wheel and it's the little faces where they can really this is what I'm feeling and it's like eight different things and talk about it then instead of letting it rule their day 
And so for us, um, it's usually at night and it's printed next to our bed where we just share the good, the bad, the in-between emotions that we're feeling. And it's definitely a way to connect and to see kind of where we're at, stress levels and... Um, That's good. It, I mean, what I'm hearing is it kind of forces you guys into communicating on an emotional level. Right. It's like, this is what's going on with mm -hmm. us emotionally. Rather than like a checklist of the day, you know, I did this. It's not or a report I did that. of the day. It's, no, this totally. is kind of how I felt throughout yeah. the day. Yes. Yeah. So that's and good. sometimes that's, my experience has been is, is that when, when, when I started a recovery, I was not used to in any way identifying my emotions. I always thought I was like the eternal optimist. But it turns out I was just like the eternal ostrich with his head in his hand. <laughs> yeah. That was really me. And I just said, no, everything's good. You're but a great baker. I was the opposite. Right. I was the pessimist. So. And, and and in truth, I think we we, we both are, um, but but pessimist, <laughs> optimist. <Yeah. laughs> okay, good call, good yeah. call. But um, but but I think the way that I was able to um, to really identify what I was feeling was to pick a situation or two in the day that took place that, that really stands out, that's just like top of mind. And then I would say, okay, this is the situation, and from that situation, I felt, da, 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 da. and I would just go through the wheel and be as thorough as possible. And for me, that got me rolling to where it wasn't as hard to identify what I felt day to day. And as I was consistent with that, then I got to the place where I was not just at the end of the day, like retrospectively emotionally aware, but I got to place, I got to place where I was real time right. emotionally yes. aware. Yes. And, and that has served me well in a huge way. But the only way I got to that was by being really, really consistent by identifying my emotions you, at the end of the day. You can hear how the, the relationship, a healthy relationship supports other areas of recovery. I mean, what you're talking about has everything to do with relapse prevention. Like if you're able to identify your emotions and understand them and deal mm -hmm. with them in, in the moment, then, then you know, your, your chances of relapse go down significantly. Yeah. But you did this at first because of this connection with Ashlyn, yeah. right? Yeah. So now you're much more mindful of, of, you can name emotions, you can feel them, you can understand what they are. For sure. It's awesome. And, and in those places, just want to be really clear, is meaning at the, at the end of the night, and we do this with our girls too at, at nighttime, in addition to when they need to, when they get home from school, is um, we we have to like have rules with that and uh, of, of to be safe because emotions aren't good or bad. Oh, they uh -huh. just, they yes. just are. So yes. I can't go into it saying, okay, Ashlyn did me long, did me wrong today. At right. breakfast, and so as soon as she talks about her feelings, I'm just gonna like get it's her. time to bludgeon it's, her because she'll be vulnerable <laughs> right then. Totally, yeah. and and um, because at the end of the day, what what's um, what's really gonna help you know you and I bond is being able to just be open and honest and safe and and realize that that was just a moment that wasn't like right. the day. measure of the whole day. Right, right. It was just a moment. Anything else on that? That, that as far as like a rule for that moment that people out of institute. I think you, I think you just said it, Kobe, which is. No, there's there's no such thing as should feel. There's no emotion is good or bad. It just is, and so to just allow each other, you know, keep that rule with each other. If 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 you're feeling a certain way, Kobe, then Ashlyn, like let him feel it. That's where he's at. Um, you can validate it. You can empathize with it. Well, it's it helps me realize I can probably step in and help if he is stressed. Like oh, maybe I should help take a burden away. Right, right. Once you can hear that, right? Yeah. But if you're otherwise I don't know. <laughs> if you're automatically like shooting him and like saying you should you're stressed, well what about me? Then then you're not gonna be able to to hear that. Right. right? So This is all a skill, just to be really clear, that we've worked and really hard at I still them. when I'm asked how are you doing, I still say good. <laughs> I have to still? look at the wheel. <laughs> I have problems. Well, I know, but it's just it's just i mean, it's a matter of just being like present in the moment to say, okay, that's right. I've got to be, I've got to be there now. So it's like taking yes. off the busy hat and putting on like the feeling hat and like, I'm oh, going really connect with myself. myself. Yes. But those are some of the best moments that, that we have right. day to day. Right. But I, you know, uh, you, you bring up a, a point to Ashton of, you know, when we're feeling emotion, it's not often that I'm just feeling sad or, you know, I'm just feeling angry. Like maybe, maybe I got 10% of sadness with a little bit of frustration, with a little bit of you know, joy going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, sure. And, and, you know, if my wife can connect to me, then she can help me. I, oftentimes I don't know what I'm feeling. And the connection isn't that person already knows and you need to go get it. It's let me explore it with you mm -hmm. so that we can figure it out together, mm -hmm. right? So That's really good. 
That's mm-hmm. really good. And, and I will say this too, one of the things that we discovered too is that sometimes um, hard conversations or even conversations about emotions were really hard for us if we're just like this, right? Looking at each other and we're like, okay, sitting down or like whatever. So what we learned is, is maybe sometimes what, what served us well is to take the feeling with us and go on a walk. That's good. Where we're, to like, where... we're not necessarily staring at each other. <laughs> right, this is good. And sometimes it's laying in bed in the dark and just Ooh, talking. Also good, because we <laughs> are nonverbal sometimes if like completely torpedoed us, <laughs> ambushed us <laughs> to anything, any, any good intentions. And so in the dark or walking yeah. where we don't have to have like face-to-face contact is like um, kind of, I don't know, kind of a doorway to, to, to remove other nonverbal obstacles do you know what I mean? Right. That might otherwise play a role Which in, goes in the objective. Which kids as well. You know what's interesting as you guys are talking because you can hear you testing the waters of safety in your relationship. Like, gosh, if we do it this way, then we can we can each take a step forward. And that's really good because cause you're aware of like what you can tolerate in terms of your safety. Yeah. And then push yourselves a little bit further. And, and your connection, your safety is going to get more and more. That's good. So, that's good to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. Okay. Well, I mean... Emotional check-in. I don't know. Date night once a week is is a good thing. Not 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 necessarily uh, sitting. You know, going to a movie because that doesn't provide anything. But ultimately, I think at the end of the day, um, giving yourselves time to connect in whatever way that you guys connect. Give each other time. Give each other energy. Um, have patience and just love each other. That's what it's all about, really. That's what we, you know, that's what we all want is love. And and so if we can overcome these hurdles and hold each other's pain, then we're, you know, everybody's going to be happier and better off. I love it. That's really good. Any other thoughts, Ash? No, that's it. Awesome. So look, guys, um, appreciate you being here. Um, Hop on to us on uh, on iTunes and love to get a great rating from you. Right. Um, You just need to search the Betrayed, the Addicted, and the Expert, or we have the link here. um, In the comments below. Yeah. And I'd uh, love to get a great review and share this, obviously, if, if anything has resonated with you. Because in, in truth, if you're not set of the bounds of addiction and betrayal trauma, what, you, what you've heard here really is applicable for any couple who is just trying to create connection. Absolutely. So, okay, yep. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll see you. See ya.